Tea in this area started around 1924. In Kenya as a whole, we cultivate maybe roughly about 160,000 hectares of tea, which produces, I would say, about 350 metric tons a year. That's why we were one of the largest tea producers globally. Second only to China, Kenya is a major tea producer, where it's a vital and lucrative business. Tea accounts for 2% of Kenya's agricultural GDP and is one of the top foreign exchange earners at 23%. About 5 million people directly and indirectly are supported by the crop in Kenya. And for about 650,000 people, it's the backbone of their livelihoods. But the country's dependence on key foreign exports hasn't always translated into increased benefits for smallholder tea farmers, which make up the bulk of producers. Most of the tea in Kenya is smallholder farmers. To have a factory, you require a lot of tea. So for the smallholders who have small little ancestral pieces of property, need to take the tea somewhere to be processed. The small-scale farmers have about 100,000 hectares of that, and they produce about 60% uh, of all the tea production. The rest of 40% is held in larger farms, which are owned now by the multinationals. Think Unilever, James Finlay Williamson, and Kapchura tea. Though they make up the majority of tea grown and exported in Kenya, there's a push to establish Kenyan tea on the global stage as its own brand and identity. What is picked exactly? How, is it work? How does it work? You look for one which has got two leaves and a bud, something like that, that's what is picked and then it's thrown into the basket as, as you see it being done. Usually it's done by, by ladies and you can see it's a continuous process, right? So you have to continue picking it, picking it because it grows and they're a large workforce because as you can see there's a lot to be picked and then it's put into the, their baskets and then that is what is weighed and, and that's how they're paid for that. Then it's transported to the factory and also weighed and sorted there in different grades and then transformed into black tea. That goes directly to the auction, where it's bought by buyers. Those buyers are buying on behalf of various packaging companies. That's how they pack it into Lipton's, into PG tips, into all that. But we have a few local packers also. Since the war in Ukraine, auction prices for tea have been volatile. And despite good weather helping to increase higher production, export destinations saw sharp declines. Former President Kenyatta emphasized the need for farmers to increase value addition to 90% of the tea grown instead of selling it raw. We're not getting value as Kenyans in this process, and we need to get value. We have to remove it from the control of a few people, all right? Currently, like now, it, is, it used to be controlled by Unilever. It was the one which was uh, having all these brands across the globe. We want to be part of this, so we also want to be producing and also ultimately packaging our own and marketing our own tea. In that way, we as Kenyans become major stakeholders in the value chain. Once that happens, we can ensure the growth of tea in the future. <laughs> Wainana and Joseph are among the many farmers in litigation against corporations like Unilever to maintain a better position within the supply chain. Everybody is fighting for their different rights. Some of those in those farms are fighting for historical injustices. They want those farms to be reallocated to the local communities. At the end of the day, all we're looking for is fairness for the minorities so that we can all participate and enjoy the, the value of our tea plantation.